Hi there, Anna. I am a teacher. I'm 24 years old and I'm from um, South East London. Initially, at the outbreak of Covid, I was quite taken in by all of the mainstream uh, media. Not that I've ever been particularly... I've always been quite sceptical of it because I come from my family of origin as a family in which there is not really a questioning of the what's what's been said. It's just kind of parroting back what The Guardian or what the... BBC has said and obviously there is always a grain of truth in everything that we see but in my opinion but at the same time I kind of felt like why why would a society in its right mind want to scare its citizens why would a society not from the outset being given giving citizens advice about eating healthily sleeping well getting enough sunlight boosting their natural immunity that was a big question for me at the beginning um, and I actually phoned my father in, in floods of tears at the beginning and um, was terrified. I felt like we were in an apocalypse. And he said to me that he was more worried about his shares and that I should look at the data. And actually, I think he was right looking at the data. So I found this channel on YouTube called Peerless Reads, which is run by this mathematician um, who is basically processing government data and showing us what's actually happening. And um, basically, yeah, I did some more research uh, looked at some more um, independent journalists, um, looked at some things by Vernon Coleman, discovered Simon Dolan quite recently, which I'm very happy to say I've discovered because otherwise it would not come across you, Anna, but I'm, I was quite impressed by Simon's um, challenging of this narrative and, you know, this is, this is illegal. No, at no point did we vote on the fact that we went into lockdown. Um, I just question, like, why is it that there's just been an, um, a global economic crash? It's it's not just here, it's in many countries. I actually was in Denmark um, in June and I was quite shocked. Again, this isn't a questioning, but these rainbows we've been shown uh, with the clap, you know, with the whole clap for the NHS on a Thursday evening, I thought was quite, fit for me, it was quite strange. Um when we've never clapped for the NHS before, when has the government ever said anything about funding the NHS or, you know, this current Tory government? I just, it's beyond me. Um, it felt very insincere to be clapping for something that, I mean, I have friends who are training as doctors and their wards have been emptier than ever. Um, they're actually more worried about the backlog after what's happened with, with, with people not being seen. And um, you know, when I was in Denmark, I actually saw these rainbow signs. You know, this, people have probably seen in schools, there have been uh, in primary schools, you might have walked past these rainbow signs about the NHS and, you know, taking care of one of our voices, all, all from very good, well-intentioned places. But I believe this is propaganda because I saw it in Denmark in the schools there. This is a global thing going on. It's not just here, as we know. And yeah, I just wanted to say that We've seen Sweden's example, which I believe they've done the right thing. But I wouldn't be surprised if suddenly Sweden in Sweden numbers go up because they're not following what the agenda wants them to do. Um, I kind of feel that different cultures will have different levels of control in the situation. Um, but yeah, on a kind of um, personal note, my, my biggest concern is I'm age 24. People in my generation... It's a worrying number of really. In, I'm not saying we're obviously this is this is about this is about kind of psychological manipulation. It's not necessarily about intelligence, but what I'm saying is I have a, a large number of highly intelligent friends. You know, we went to university together. They should be the future of our society. Um, they know many doctors, philosophers. I just think that they're, they're not questioning anything. I have friends who are doctors are not questioning Sage. Where's the who? Look at the where the money is, you know, and thank goodness these doctors are coming forward and in Spain and other countries. Just why is there no questioning of these things? Like I, I was having a conversation with my friends who's a doctor and I'll ask him about COVID and did he not think that it was a bit risky to be imposing a, a mandatory vaccination which we haven't tested properly? Um, you know, vaccinations as far as like I'm concerned should be tested for over 20, 30 years before they can be considered safe. And um you know, he says he thinks the virus will become endemic and will never go away. But this just feels like part of the narrative that we've been well, that we've been told, you know, that it's never going to go away. And we're going to be in this permanent state of the new abnormal. Um, but yeah, what concerns with me is the overlap between this, what I see as a neo-Marxist movement of censoring, cancel culture, 
of dividing rather than uniting. Um, I think there are some very good intentions behind the Black Lives Matter. Of course, we need to educate people about not being racist. We need to unite. We need to have awareness of what's going on. Um, and of course, we need to think about the history of our predecessors and how people have been oppressed, especially black people. But by by saying this, these things, you know, if we look at who George Soros is, who's funding these things, it's all for me. It's all connected. This whole I this whole pandemic is just one element of this move towards basically extremism. In um, which to be to be honest with you, I suppose extreme left wing thinking will also push the right to its like, more extreme. So we're just going to be in this divided society and people can't are not thinking logically about this. They're responding by fear. They're responding from place of like being too attached to their own identity politics. I myself am a gay woman. You know, I've had I'm, I'm, as a woman as well, obviously, but obviously I have I'm a white woman. So, you know, all of these intersectional things of interse- intersectional um, gender politics has given us. But at the end of the day, we're all just human beings. And if we get too stuck in these identity politics narratives, we're not going to get anywhere. And I think this is the danger here. People will be projecting their own kind of rage. All of the stuff that they've been go- going through in their personal life gets projected onto this political scene or whatever. And I just think, basically, I think a kind of therapeutic point of view, a therapist, from a point of view, sort of psychotherapy here, is that we've got a lot of unhealed people in our society. We've got some people who are in charge who I would consider would be on the, on the kind of spectrum of, of things kind of towards psychopath psychopathy and I only feel compassion for them you know people who are it's 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 a horror what's going on with um Epstein and and these paedophiles and it's just for me Covid is a massive distraction from what's going on and even we've seen the narrative change from Covid to coronavirus and obviously people are trying to count the cases now as um as um Covid-19 which is I don't think it is um so yeah, it's 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 a really difficult because we've got these we've got our own views and we've got our own worries that we're it's so easy to project to project these onto the exterior world. But I do believe that the good will win. The good will win. We have to unite. We have to have these conversations with people, not out of anger, you know, out of compa- with a compassionate way. Listening, I think listening is the best way. We listen to other people, um, and we just try and unite and just think, you know, whatever we our political opinions are. It's just important, but I do feel the sense that we need to start really waking up. And I am pretty concerned about the kinds of cancel culture that are happening. I mean, you know, in my friendship circles, I've brought up the issue of freedom. I've brought up the issue of individual rights. Um, you know, I've I've, brought, I've got friends who work in, who live and work in Germany about the mask, the protest that happened on last Sunday. I believe that the mainstream media represented this as far fewer people than actually worked did attend. I feel like it was over 100,000, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. And I just feel that sometimes my friends don't even, like, they don't even listen to me. They, they kind of just ignore the things that I'm raising. And I think it's just quite a shame that people just respond on this emotional level and they just close off this is dangerous this is actually dangerous this causes people not to think critically anymore and i think we need to come back to a society where we can actually have open conversations like this this whole this whole channel you're facilitating with no censorship just people having conversations about their feelings and we can you know the whole point is that we can we can refute if we don't agree with someone we can refute them we don't we don't push them out of the circle because the problem then is that we get extreme behavior because you know if people are pushed out of the conversation they will they they will have some some form of like resentment or anger and it will build up and it will it will come out in other ways. So, and on a, on a final point, I'd like to say that it's just so ironic when we talk about we just think about the government line at the beginning about herd and immunity, which obviously Sweden has followed and I think has done a very successful job of. If we look at it, herd immunity, they don't want they don't want us to be immune to their agenda, do they? So it it just works in all of these levels psychologically, and um, I think it's a very interesting time to be, to be living in, and I think that. I'm a very fortunate situation where I don't feel like I'm um, hopefully not in danger of losing any um, current job or anything like that. I mean, I could be in the future, who knows, but I feel that my heart just goes out to people who have been really affected by this already, the furlough scheme. I'm just hoping that, and I'm also going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to have these conversations with people and to, 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 to try and gently say to people, look, I don't think this is as it seems. And... I just don't think it's too late. I think we can always have those conversations. We're going down the street. Yesterday I, was, I went into a shop, had a conversation with them, um, this owner of a shoe shop about it, um, about his business and how, you know, he has three other businesses, but if he didn't, like, his, his livelihood would be at serious risk. And, 
yeah, just being open, I think, open to people, just talking, just keep talking to people, I think, is really important at these times. And just hopefully this whole movement of people who are questioning things is going to inspire a kind of peaceful um, sort of overturning of, of, of what I believe has been planned um, since the end of the Second World War, if we if we go, if you, if you go down that line. And I'm kind of questioning right now about the Nuremberg Code and how this can... Uh, protect us and how we can stop a kind of legislative legislative illegal legislative change um as happened with um you know i suppose like lockdown just happened didn't it and there was no legal wasn't really any legal questioning um and i'm just concerned that there are human rights laws that have been in place for years that could get shifted so yeah but that's that's my kind of take on it but obviously I'm always open to changing my mind and thinking about other things, other 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 point of viewpoints. But yeah, it is really really concerning. But I'm also think that we should. The whole point is that we're divided and we're operating from a place of fear. So I think we have to really counter that and be open, and calm and focus on the positive things. Getting out in nature, having exercise, if we can. And obviously, I'm speaking from a situation of privilege. Some people might not even have that access. So I just think, yeah, just solidarity to everybody raise those positive vibrations. I think, I think it's going to be okay. I think we're going to win.